skipped over chapter one, chapter two. I'm going to take my time. So for the next couple of months, we're going to be in this book. So get it. I decided not to rush like I usually do. We, most of us as Christians, don't believe God loves us. Most of us as Christians still believe that we are on a merit system. Most of us still believe that we got to do, 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 then God's going to love us. Do, do, do. If I do enough of this, then God's going to bless me. I do enough of this, then I get God's grace. It is a lie. It is a fabricated lie by us and the devil. The Lord loves you regardless. He created you and he made you. This book, his terminology, the way he talks, he's he's really educated. It's an easy book to read, but, you know, he's got some nice little vocabulary. I was like, he's a smart man. This man is a smart man. He might have been an alcoholic and God delivered him and all that, but this man is brilliant. He is smart. So, I like how he breaks it down. I said, man, you got to be anointed or whatever. God had to give you insight to write this book. Go get it. Quit letting me be like, okay, well, Pastor Linda going to be, Pastor Linda K is going to be reading from the book, so I'm going to be cheap and not get it. No, y'all, it's a good manual. This is my second or third time going through this book. I've gone through it and just looked at a few little other things, but you all need to get this book. Amazon.com, ASAP. Come on now. Okay. Here we go. I'm try to stay and keep it short. You know, that might have happened. If you got to listen to half of it and pause it and come back later, then do that. Okay. All righty. So, today, I want to go over chapter one. But let me go back to, excuse me, chapter two, which is called The Imposter. Let me go back to chapter one that says, come out of hiding. I want to take you all to page 19. I wrote it down this time. I want to go back to page 19. And on page 19, it says, I love this. It's, it talks about how Christians are, we still hide ourselves. We won't tell the truth. We want to come be our authentic self. And this is what it says. <clears throat> and so we unwittingly project onto God our own attitudes and feelings toward ourselves. As Blaise and Pascal wrote, God made man in his own image and man returned a compliment. Thus, if we feel hateful toward ourselves, we assume that God feels hateful toward us. But we cannot assume that he feels about us the way we feel about ourselves unless we love ourselves compassionately, intensely, and freely. In human form, Jesus revealed to us what God is like. He exposed our projections for the idolatry that they are and gave us the way to become free of them. It takes a profound conversion to accept that God is relentless, page 20, tender, and compassionate toward us just as we are, not in spite of our sins and faults, that we that, that would not be total acceptance, but with them. Though God does not condone or sanction evil, he does not withhold his love because there is evil in us. Because there is evil in us, he don't hold back his love. Like I remember God told me years ago, about a few years ago, I was in my bedroom and I was walking across the floor, coming across my bedroom. I heard the Holy Spirit say, love your son as though he's already perfect. Love your son. Treat your son. One of my sons, God brought to my spirit. I was like, I already love him. He said, treat him as though he's already doing right. Treat your son as though he's already acting right. Treat your sons. And neither one of them know which one I'm talking about. I got two of them. But the Holy Spirit said, love your son regardless of the way he behaves or the way he's acting right now. He says, go ahead. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had no idea that I was holding back my deep love for my own grown child because they were they were not acting according to the way I felt like I had raised them, the way me and his father has brought them up. And my Holy Spirit from to me, nowhere. I was not praying. I was not in the spirit or whatever. And the Holy Spirit said to me, 
You need to love your son now and not wait until he get his act together. I repented. I said, God, I'm sorry. I did not even know I was doing that. And God fills my heart for love for my child, for my adult child. And now I love them with the love of the Lord. So I'm telling you, and then I'm going to give you one more testimony. This is so good. Then I'm going to move on to chapter two. Then the spirit of God, oh, y'all, I, I do not want to tell y'all this. I do not want to tell y'all this. I'm telling you, this is transparent. Woo! Woof! It might have been a demon coming out. Woof! Woof! There might have been a demon going to the dry places. <laughs> he told me about the first of this year. Y'all do not, I'm, I'm, don't get mad at me, but wait a minute. I got to, I got to take a moment because I don't want to, I don't, I don't, you, you don't, you want to, everybody think you got it going on, but I don't. He says, I want you. No, he corrected me. He says, you need to make an adjustment in your attitude according, uh, uh, um, regarding your husband. I'm the most loving wife there is. <laughs> I am a loving wife. I rub on my husband. I kiss on my husband. And I was in the car on my way to church. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I was on a consecration. I was on a consecration. I was not asking for this. This is not what I had been praying for. I thought I was in deep love with my husband. I've been married to my husband 34 long years. We got married, he was 19, and I was 20. The Holy Spirit said, I need to make an adjustment to the way I thought and felt about my husband. <laughs> and y'all, I felt so sad and bad. The Holy Spirit was trying to make me feel bad. He was letting me know that I thought I had it going on, but I did not. I did not. He says that you are not for him like you should be. I was like, what? What are you talking about? But the Holy Spirit came so lovingly. And so in, in my spirit, my mother was on one side. My daughter was in the van as we was driving to church. And I was like, are you kidding me? God will check you if you let the Holy Spirit be your BFF. He checked me on my son years ago and says, love him now before he's perfect, before he's delivered, before he's like you need him to be. Then he just adjusted me in the beginning of 2019. You are not for your husband like you should be. Get your life, Holy Spirit. Y'all, I'm holding the, I'm holding the book. Y'all, I was like this on the steering wheel. My mom didn't even know what happened. The Holy Spirit can bust you and nobody else know you've been busted. My mom was in her own world. My daughter was in her own world. And I was like, oh my God. And I felt so bad for a whole two days. I cried the best kind of cry because I'm not a crier. What I mean by that, it won't come out. Like I'm going, like, oh, I want to cry. But I can cry when the Holy Ghost get on me. I can cry when I'm worshiping. I can be snot nose tears when the Holy Ghost get on me. Go get your t-shirts. She roars. I started crying. I was like, felt bad. My husband came in there talking to me out the church. I was in my room. I did not want to talk to him because I was mad. Because I was like, how dare you check me? Don't check him. You checking me. And y'all had to get through all of my demons. I had to repent. I had to acknowledge that I was feeling this way. I had to agree with the Holy Ghost that he was correct because it wasn't the devil. It was the Holy Ghost. So I had to come out of hiding. Sorry. And repent. I repented. Now I am, I'm already extra. Anybody who knows me and the way I be around my husband, I kiss on my husband. I rub on his dude. I rub on his breast and body. I just don't even care what nobody says. We be sitting and eating and people be eating and I'll be forgetting. And I'll just take his mouth and I'll just kiss him. And then I rub on his head and I'll be rubbing on him. And he just sit there and let me do it. And that's I that was not the woman I started out being. Oh, let's just get it. Don't get it twisted. I was a straight up don't play. You better come correct to me, woman. And all of a sudden, I'm rubbing on this man. 
goosey goosey get the demons what in the world is going on and he just be standing there he comes in the kitchen last night and he don't be doing nothing for me let me be let me be clear he ain't taking me on no dates he ain't planning nothing he ain't doing nothing this all from the love of god in my heart i'd be rubbing on his booty and stuff and and I just take his head. I was in the kitchen. I was cooking some cookies. He said, Linda, what you cooking? I said, I'm cooking me some cookies. He said, you cooking us some cookies. I said, no, I'm not. And I just, because he loves me because I'm um, Coco. Cuckoo Coco. He loves it because he's a serious man. So he needs somebody like me to break him out of that spell. Because I'm serious and him serious ain't going to work up in here. So I'll grab him by the head and I'll bring his head to my face and make him kiss my lips. And then I'll grab his nose and then I'll do the Eskimo, my big nose on his cute nose. That means I don't know where I'm going here. But I'm telling y'all, God at 34 years of marriage can reunite if you repent. If you don't love folks at your church, you sick of your church, ask God to give you a new love for your church. You sick of your uh, ministers and gospel, you can't stand them no more, ask God to get that spirit of offense out of you. Come out of hiding. All right. I told y'all enough of my business. All right. So, 24, page 24. Because of how we feel about ourselves, it's sometimes difficult to believe this a numerous as numerous Christian authors, wiser and more insightful than I have said, we cannot accept love from another human being when we do not love ourselves, much less accept that God could possibly love us. One more again. Because of how we feel about ourselves, you hate yourself. You mad at everybody else because they don't love you, but you don't even love yourself. It's wrong. We do it. Okay, calm down, London. You're too loud. Calm down. Ain't nobody in the house but me. So, <sighs> because of how we feel about ourselves, it's sometimes difficult to believe this. As nu as numerous Christian author, uh, <clears throat> as numerous Christian authors, wiser and more insightful than I have said, we cannot accept love from another human being when we do not love ourselves. Much less accept that God could possibly love us. We over here going like, I love myself. I'm the bomb.com. No, you don't. You hate, most of us hate ourselves internally. We tired of making the same mistake. We tired of what, tired of being the way we are. Uh, we upset because people don't think that we're interesting. We get interesting. Uh, we're boring and we want to know why people don't want to be around us. Cause you're boring and you you ain't loving and you and, and you in your own world and, and you want folks to like you and you don't even like yourself we don't like ourselves and we want other people to like us okay 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 all right so then the next one I want to read, page 25, and then I'm going to move to chapter 2. Page 25. <clears throat> I read this last week, so go back to this. But I talked about when he was 8, how he, uh, the imposter came in as his false self. And well, I'm going to go ahead and read it again. When I was 8, the imposter or false self was born as a defense against pain. The imposter within whispered, Brennan? Don't ever be your real self anymore because nobody likes you as you are. Invent a new self that everybody will admire and nobody will know. So he says, I became a good boy, boy polite, well-mannered, unobtrusive, and differential. I studied hard, scored excellent grades, won a scholarship in high school, <clears throat> And was stalked every waking moment by the terror of abandonment and the sense that nobody was there for me. So some of us, uh, some of our children, we, they make all A's. They try to prove themselves because they want us to love them. Or we be on our job. We won't tell the truth. We won't voice our opinion. We want to be heard, but we won't say anything. We want to talk. talk. We want to be heard, but we won't talk. We won't give any information out. We won't give any... Um, I remember when I was working at one of these jobs I was at. And I wanted them to think, think in their mind what I was thinking. 
and I didn't have the courage to say what I needed to say because I was afraid they might get mad at me. They was of a particular race and I was like, ooh, I'm the only one in here and what if they don't like me and I'm the token black and they might not like me. So I would keep my mouth and smile. And then I start getting bold and say it, and instead of waiting till you're mad up to here and then cussing folks out, go on, which I wouldn't cuss you out, you might just say strong words. I went on and built myself up in my courage and learned, I took a leap of faith, okay, I'm just going to say it, and risked, 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 risked being not accepted. I risked them not liking me. I risked <clears throat> them not wanting to hear from me and to avoid me. In my marriage, I have done that. I would not say things because I did not want my husband to be upset with me and didn't um, think that I was a good wife or a submitted wife. So I would withhold information that was pertinent but even though I would tell him what he needed to hear, wanted to hear, but I had to risk him being mad at me later or not want to talk to me again because I didn't answer accordingly. So this dude in this book, Abba's Child, he said, I'm just going to be an imposter. I'm just going to act this way and put on my false self so that everybody can love me and... um but I myself am not being authentic to who I am and being my true self because I'm afraid that if I be my true self, I will be abandoned. Okay. Last part in coming out of hiding, chapter one. The great divorce between my head and my heart endured throughout my ministry. So this man was is in ministry for 18 years. I proclaimed the good news of God's passionate, unconditional love, utterly convicted in my head, but not feeling it in my heart. I never felt loved. Y'all, pastors and ministers of the gospel, when you hear about this suicide, you hear about why are these pastors killing themselves? What is it? They, have, most of them have not received, I'm not talking about the mental illness and the demonic, whatever, whatever they're saying. I don't know the answer of what they doing with the suicide, but we are preaching or ministering or telling everybody else God loves them, but we ourselves don't believe it. Brennan Preach 18 years about the passion of Christ, the love of Christ, how God loves everybody, how God loves you. And he himself did not believe that God loved him. So preachers can preach to you and tell you God will forgive you. God loves you. God's for you. God will never leave you, never forsake you. And we ourselves don't believe the same gospel that we are preaching y'all. I put a little note here. Teach and preach. We teach and preach about the love of God to others, but don't believe that God loves us. I put a little note on here for myself. So come out of hiding. That's chapter one. And uh, let me read this last one on page 26. He says, one second. Ah, drop my pen. He says on 26, he says, it used to be that I never felt safe with myself unless I was performing flawlessly. My desire to be perfect had transcended my desire for God. Um, Terrorized by an all or nothing mentality. Now this man, is, he can use some great words. He's saying that he was being tormented. Because mentally, because he was not perfect. He says, I interpreted weakness as mediocrity and inconsistencies as a loss of nerve. I diminished compassion and self-acceptance as inappropriate responses. My jaded perception of personal failure and inadequacy led to a loss of self-esteem. 
triggering episodes of mild depression and heavy anxiety. This dude is saying because he was faking and not believing that God loved him, he became depressed, had mild anxiety. Could this be? Could this be? I just got an email. Could this be the reason why a lot of ministers of the gospel or in Christian belief are killing themselves? Because deep down inside, they hate themselves. And they live by a law in themselves of perfectionism that they don't tell everybody else that they got to be perfect, but they make themselves got to be perfect. And their minds beat them daily. He said right here, I need to underline that so I don't forget that. Let me put this in yellow. He says on page 26, my jaded perception of personal failure and inadequacy led to a loss of self-esteem triggering episodes of mild depression and heavy anxiety. This is what this dude said in this book. Unwittingly, I had projected onto God my feelings about myself. I felt safe with him only when I saw myself as noble, generous, and loving without scars, fears, or tears. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to move on to chapter 2. Y'all got to read the book for yourself. Chapter 2, they're just so good. Chapter 2 is called The Imposter. I'm going to read these two little things and then... Hey y'all, I wrote on page 31, the last uh, chap last page on chapter one. I wrote this year I'll be 55. And I put on here. I said, on 9-28-2019, I will be 55. I will be totally one with myself. Looking forward and not hesitating to be all that God has called me to be. That's what I wrote to myself. All right. Chapter two, the imposter. What is an imposter? An imposter is someone pretending to be something that they are not. An imposter, chapter two, an imposter is someone pretending to be something that they are not. You ever heard of playing possum or playing dead or acting like you, the, the possum act like you're dead, but it ain't dead. It's really not dead. It's want you to leave them alone. So what we'll do, we'll play like we or someone else, because we think that if we show you ourselves, you won't love us. You won't accept us. Well, guess what? Every day for years, I made myself be me. Because people wanted me to be them. People wanted me to act their way. They wanted me to act like other first ladies or act like other people. But guess what, y'all? I am Linda K. I am an anointed glory carrier. That's what Linda K means of God. I am an elder sister, that's what K me, and I carry the glory keys of God, and you do too, and that's what my name means, that's the reason why I go by Linda K. So you might go on like, you doing Diddy and Puffy, that is my real name, Linda K, hallelujah, that's my real name, but I go by Linda K because it continues to tell me who you are, don't you bag down people, it's time for you to roar, it's time for you to come from being pretending that who you're not, quit being who you're not, God has called you to be your authentic self, even with all your flaws, people be laughing at me, they think I'm funny, they think that, you know, well, we'll laugh at her, because we don't want you laughing at me, so I'm good with it, because I come to the realization you don't have no hell or no heaven to put me in. And I told my husband, every time I'd be grabbing his butt and shaking him and taking him by his head and making him kiss me, I said, aren't you glad your wife is like this? And he go, yes, I am. He'd be like this. Ain't you glad your wife crazy? He said, yes, I am. But first, he didn't like me to be crazy because he wanted me to be like, oh, them pastors ain't going to like you if you don't be up. Uh, you got to be uptight, London. Well, don't like me. Don't like me. 
Don't like me. I'm for real. Like, I feel good. I feel good. Da -na 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 -na. And the way I should. Da -na 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 -na. I'm sorry. I just, just, I feel good. Okay, James Brown hit me. Okay, come back. Come back. It feels so good to whoever my friends truly are, the people who really love me, the people who really want to be around me, even though I'm, I'm, I'm um, quirky, 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 whatever it is, and that I'm smart in God, I'm full of wisdom of God, I've been anointed by God, I got uh, uh, the anointing of God, and I am still like this. And I can have fun and I can play in the rain and I can run around and play on the tennis court and I can do all these things because I just counted up yesterday that I, in 15 years, I will be 70 years old. And God said, you don't have no time to be playing. In 20 years, you'll be 75 years old. So go on and be who you are. And I have a people that going to hear you on Periscope, going to hear you on Facebook. Y'all going to share, share, share. And I pray that say, God, send me people who supposed to hear my voice, who supposed to be in my tribe, who supposed to be with me. And I'm supposed to be with them. I don't want nobody else tribe. I don't want nobody else peoples. I want who's for me. Guess what? You can be for me and for five others. You don't have to just be for me. But the the, the folks who's supposed to be for me, going to be for me. And the folks who's supposed to be for you, going to be for you. So call them out. Say, hey, oh, hey. I told y'all I'm crazy. Y'all really don't know how crazy I really am. Hey. Call them out in the jungle. Go in the closet. Oh, oh. Come to me, come to me, all my people. Because I am a multi-million dollar solution for somebody. It's just a matter of time. I am a multi-million dollar solution for somebody. It took me years to get this confident. I used to be confident and then ministers of the gospel, preachers of the gospel, y'all would not believe the stuff that happened in ministry. Y'all would not believe the jealousy. You would not believe how we pull one another down. You would not believe how insecure we are and how we fight one another. You would not believe how many of us is watching porn and drinking and laying up and cheating. You would not believe because we won't be our authentic self. So we got to find an outlet. We got to find an escape. I got to tell y'all this. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see, what time is it? Woo! Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Listen to this. Uh, the imposter. Look at page 42 and 43. And then I'm done. I'll let y'all go. Y'all need to share this because it's good. This is good. Um... Oh, I got to read this on 41. I missed this one. 41, the imposter has built life around achievements. I got to write that down so I don't forget. Page 41, first paragraph on that page. Ooh, this is so good, the imposter. <sighs> you need to get this book, y'all. See if you're an imposter. Okay, 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 here we go. The imposter has built life around achievements, success, busyness, and self-centered activities that bring gratification and praise from others. It is the nature of the false self to save us from knowing the truth about our real selves, from penetrating the deeper causes of our unhappiness, from seeing ourselves as we really are, vulnerable, afraid, terrified, and unable to let our real self emerge. Because if you knew the real me, if you knew these real preachers and these real folks that ain't being real and they all in other folks' face, we are afraid to be our vulnerable selves. But guess who ain't afraid right now? Linda K. Here I am. Love me. Like me. Love me. I ain't saying them other words. Love me, love me, love me, like me, like me. I'm not saying them other words. Okay, 42. 42, 43, then we're done. 42 says it's so good. We even refuse to be our true self with God. How can you not be your true self with God? 
We even refuse to be our true self with God. And then wonder why we lack intimacy with him. We wonder why God ain't with us. Why we can't feel God. The deepest desire of our hearts is for union with God. From the first moment of our existence, our most powerful yearning is to fulfill the original purpose of our lives. I did a conference years ago called The Original. I got the t-shirt to prove it. I did a t-shirt called The Original. And God has an original intent that started back in the garden. You need to go back. He wants you to dominate. All of you, male and female. And it says that from the first moment of our existence, our most powerful yearning is to fulfill. Our most powerful yearning, yearning is to fulfill the original purpose of our lives. To see him more clearly, love him more dearly, follow him more nearly. Oh, that all rhymes. We are made for God. And nothing less will really satisfy us. You can have all the, the vagina you want. You can get all the penises you want. You know, don't let your children hear this. And you do all that. But your deep, deep, deepness wants more of God. Because he created you. He made you. So when you're trying to find five men and go on this day because you're trying to be fulfilled, it's because you have not touched the God that's on the inside of you. You got to become authentic and quit hiding. You and I quit hiding from God. Show your real self to God. Okay. All right. Prayer is essentially the expression of our heart longing for love. It is not so much the listing of our requests but the breathing of our own deepest request to be united with God as fully as possible. That's what prayer is about. Y'all don't miss me on in between Wednesday's prayer, 6 a.m. Every Wednesday, you better come on. I'm on here and I'm on Periscope. In between Wednesday, 6 a.m. Don't miss it this Wednesday. This prayer is essentially the expression of our heart longing for love. It is not so much the listing of our requests, but the breathing of our own deepest request to be united with God as fully as possible. That's what prayer is all about. Let me underline it. I mean, let me highlight it. I'm going to say it again on uh, uh, on in between Wednesday at 6 a.m. <sighs> Page 43. Then we're done. I'm going to let you go. Y'all enjoying this? Y'all, this is not so delicious. <sighs> the first paragraph on page 43, this book. Y'all listening? Is this delicious or not? Thank you. Okay, the false self dreads being alone, knowing that if he would become silent within and without, he would discover himself to be nothing. He would be left with nothing, but his own nothingness, I don't know whether that's a word, but that's what he got. And to the false self, which claims to be everything, such a discovery would be his own undoing. The false self dreads being alone, knowing that if he would become silent within and without, he would discover himself to be nothing. He would be left with nothing but his own nothingness. And to the false self, which claims to be everything, such a discovery would be his own undoing. So if I come and let y'all know the true who I am self, I will be dismantled. 
my true nothingness because if I'm an imposter pretending to be somebody that I am not, if that comes unraveled, if you become unraveled, you'll find out that you ain't nothing because the imposter is pretending to have all these gifts and talents and these things and it does not. So the true person, the true self comes and find out I ain't nothing and most people cannot eat by themselves. People can't go out and sit at the park by themselves. They can't sit in the house by themselves. They got to either have on the TV. They got to have a TV on to go to sleep. They got to have a TV on to wake up. They got to um, uh, have on, they got to be on their phones all the time. They got to be on social media all the time because being by themselves shows them that they really haven't built themselves up on their most holy faith. Praying the Holy Spirit, praying in English, learning who you are in Christ Jesus. Because the only person who can show you who you are is Christ Jesus. I have a book called My Self Portrait. You can go to my website, LundaHLee.com. Click on that book. It takes you through 12 sessions of how to learn how to become your authentic self. I wrote this book about five years ago. I, I guess I need to figure out how to make it where you can click on electronically and just get it. I'll figure that out. So I can say click on it and get it electronically. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Maya going to help me. Somebody going to help me do that. So you can click on it and get that book, My Self Portrait. Right now it's in the form where I can mail it to you, I think. I have it somewhere where I can send it to you. But anyway, so go there and get that book. It's a manual. I can send it to you, My Self Portrait. And it takes you 12 sessions on how to be your authentic self. Okay, let me go back to this. That just came to me. I ain't, was, was not even trying to sell that. So, if you, the false self dreads being alone, you can't stay to be in the car by yourself. You can't stand to go to the movies by yourself. You can't stand uh, to do anything by yourself. You got to have somebody with you at all times. And you need other people to be with you to protect you so that you can let them be forward and you be in the background. That's an imposter. You are an imposter. I am an imposter. When we sit back and not let people hear us because we feel like we're dumb and stupid. We'll be dumb and stupid. I had girlfriends growing up. They were dumb. They were pretty, but they were dumb. Uh, yeah, I know that's not pretty to say, but they were. They were dumb, but they were cute. And they kept on talking. They cuteness, we tolerate them because they was cute. So I'm saying to you, you, the more you show yourself, the smarter you get. I'm going to like you dumb or not. I'm going to like you smart or not. I'm either your friend or not being your friend. But your imposter self, I don't want your imposter. I want you. I want the true, authentic you. The women who's with me, these women, these women who did call me their mentor, these women, y'all, these women full of themselves. Let me tell you what I mean by this. When they get with me, they just become they self. They be saying all kind of stuff. I be like, are y'all, y'all women belong to me? They be like, yeah, we belong to you. We belong to you. They be acting like, oh my God, they do not be no imposters. They be telling me how they feel. They don't be telling nobody else how they feel. They go like, I can tell you because I know you're going to love me anyway. So live. I be the right mentor because I's going to love you with your foolishness. I love you when you're a fool. Yes, I do. I sure do. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing a myself portrait, taking y'all through a mentorship for those who want to get on that. That's going to be, I'm probably going to start that in October. But right now, I'm doing a free webinar, September 26th. Go to LundaHLee.com. Go on and register. I'm going to close with this. Close with this. LundaHLee.com is free, but I only got a, lot, a minimum of seats because I paid for the seats, but you're going to get to be blessed free. September 26th, 8.30 p.m. Thursday night. Free. I'm going to be talking about She Roars. Men can get on it too. I just call it She Roar because I is a she. But it's about getting your voice. Okay. Last but not least. 43. The false self flees silence and solitude because they remind him of death. Oh my gosh. Let me read this. I'm... Uh, obviously, 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 the imposter is antsy in prayer. He hungers for excitement, craves some mood altering experience. That's the reason why a lot of people are on drugs. He is depressed when deprived of the spotlight. 
Have you ever been around them? Ministers of the gospel, regular people, they got to be in the sun. If you talking, they going to out talk you. They won't let nobody else talk. They got to be the spotlight. That's the imposter. They got to be seen all the time. Then you got the other person who's fakery and won't talk about say nothing because they don't want you to know how they truly are because they don't like themselves. Both extreme. Then it says, he is depressed when deprived of the spotlight. The false self is frustrated because he never hears God's voice. He cannot since God sees no one there. Prayer is deaf to every identity that does not come from God. If you are operating out of another identity, God ain't with you in that way. Now, I ain't talking about God don't love you. But if you come in before God as an imposter, God is not. He only recognizes who you truly are, your true identity, who you really, uh, this ain't good English, who you really is, is who you really are. Then he says, He cannot sense God sees no one. Their prayer is deaf to every identity that does not come from God. The false self flees silence and solitude because they remind him of death. Last quote. Whatever is denied cannot be healed. Page 43. Whatever, I feel something on that, is denied cannot be healed. Whatever is denied, okay, God, when I was, uh, uh, when I used to like to watch uh, pornography, because I didn't know when I was from a little girl, I thought it was cute. I mean, I thought it was good to see them little books. I didn't know. Whatever. And then so when you grow up with it from five years old, you find your father's books. You don't know it is bad. You don't know. You go like, oh, here goes a magazine. What is this? And it was, they was cut. It was like, like drawing. It wasn't like pictures like we got today. It was like, like little drawings. I said, oh, what is this? What are they doing? Five years old. So when I came to God, because sin or, uh, or hiding from God, most of us don't want God to deal with the stuff that we like. If you like it, you ain't going to bring it to God. If you like drinking, hear me. Everybody can't drink. In my family, on both sides, is not good genetically. But me, I miss that gene. But it, it didn't miss all my family folks. It's some folks, they love to drink in my family. Love to drink. But it's, it's not taking you in a good place. So it ain't that, oh, she talking about sin. If you don't tell God about it, he ain't going to make you uh, tell him about it. When I brought it to him, I go like, God, I don't want this. God said, where you going? You think the enemy don't be trying to tell me? You need to look at that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You're a grown woman. You're a sex therapist. I'm a sex therapist. I need to know about sex. I need to know about the activities of sex. I need to know things about it. But I don't have to watch that to get it. And if you don't want to bring it to God, most men ain't gonna to come to God because I'm a woman. Because it ain't a whole, it's a less, it's a low percent of women watching porn, but they are doing it. But why I can't watch it? Why you should watch? Because the objectifying people, the hate of the folks, the objectify of making those people be not not a human being. That's why. That's why. Seeing them as an object, seeing them as not human, seeing it as their fault. That's not why. How you going to love some others and, dis and disrespect someone else's body or whatever you want to call it. We don't come to God and say, God, I want to stop lying. God, I love lying. I'm a liar. I love to lie. We don't want to come to God and ask God that. We don't want to come to God and say, God... You made my body. I remember I was promiscuous. You think I wanted to ask God, God, before I got married? I don't care about telling y'all. Y'all ain't got no hair to put me in. I ain't been with one man. My husband, 30, 34 years. I ain't want now another man. And I ain't going to tell you why I don't want now another man. Because it'll be ugly. And y'all won't like me. I don't care about you don't like me. But I don't want you to hear what I think about men. And it's not good. So let me move on. So, uh, 
So I would ask God, I said, God, when I was a teenager, because I was promiscuous and I had been touching appropriately. And so you could either go either way. You can go and start liking women, which I did, or you can go to a place where you don't want to be touched. Or you can go to the place that you want to touch everybody. You want to do everything. So I went that route. So I had to ask God, I want that out of me. I do not want to because I objectified young boys. I objectified them. I was not in love with them. I, I used their body as an object. Let me see. Let me see. Y'all, this stuff go deep, y'all. I took this to God. I said, God, get this out of me. But most people won't come to God and say, God, get this demon out of me. Everybody don't want to say, God, I don't want nobody to know that I'm an alcoholic. I don't want nobody to know that I'm addicted to porn. I don't want nobody to know that I'm addicted to pain medicine. I don't want to go up to the altar. I don't want, thank y'all for the hearts. Thank y'all on Facebook. My Periscope folks gone. Y'all catch me on the replay. But y'all like, yeah. So y'all like, what? Yeah. We don't want it. You got to be your true self. Facebook slowing down on me. Y'all better share this one. I hope I don't delete it. <laughs> Whatever is denied cannot be healed. Whatever is denied cannot be healed. I end on that. Y'all better come back next Monday, Fresh Start Mondays. Go get your t-shirts, pre-order them. And go ahead on and register for the free She Roars Muzzle. Be, get, um, let's get unmuzzled September 26th. I have a limited amount of spaces. Go ahead and get your spaces that I paid for. It's free to you. Free, free, free. I just want to talk a little bit, do a little PowerPoint, and, and give you a little uh, part of She Getting Unmuzzled. I can't give it all to you, but I'm giving you as much as I can in that time frame. And I'm having a conference November the 14th and 15th in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 7 p.m. Dr. Yvonne K. Part on Thursday night and moi on Friday night. And it's going to be dynamic. 20 years of strong women armed together. Amen. So you come out. Love you guys. I'm going to close it. See you later.